President Jerzy Buzek, you've been in this position now for almost two and a half years. It's been a difficult period for the EU, perhaps for the presidency too. Maybe very difficult, but also very interesting because, uh, first of all, we had to introduce Lisbon Treaty, even with the ratification uh, in Ireland and also approval in the Czech Republic was not too easy and I was involved in both, uh, in both countries to, to help uh, Lisbon Treaty to be ratified and working and then implementation was not easy and of course uh, a quite a new situation for the European Parliament because um, now we are really a powerful institution for legislation, co-legislator with the Council. Um, on the other hand, uh, it was also crisis uh, which uh, disturbed our activity in some senses, but as a matter of fact, at the end of our activity, I'm quite sure that the European Union could be stronger, better organized, because in the time of crisis, it's always uh, easier to take more responsible and deep reforms. We've had this financial crisis, though, in the, in the middle of it all, which has upset things. We have tended to see member states trying to save themselves, and the, the communitaire attitude has, has rather gone by the way, hasn't it, here? We haven't seen the EU countries working together perhaps enough. Well, uh, it was an unusual situation, and we know that uh, Euro zone crisis was as a matter of fact crisis of credibility and trust one, two, three member states and um, uh, sovereign debt crisis rather than the real crisis of Eurozone. We must um, um, uh, be quite sure that we are talking about financial instabilities rather than the true economic crisis. And um, it was not easy to overcome and 17 member states from the Euro um, area, they had to take some strong and quick decisions from time to time. But it's very important that we can spread the decision for the whole European Union, for 27 member states. We should not divide ourselves on two-speed Europe. And uh, that was also one of the most important activity of myself and the European Parliament as a whole uh, because we uh, wanted to prevent creation of the two-speed Europe, not to divide us on 17 and 10. Now, the European Parliament has taken some fairly tough stance on things like uh, financial control, financial governance, economic governance. Quite often, what the MEPs would have liked has been slightly watered down by the member states. They don't seem to have the stomach for the very tough measures. Is that disappointing? Uh, yes, um, we wanted to prevent watering down um, uh, any such measures, like in six-pack, for example. Uh, we wanted to have um, uh, more automatic sanctions because it's quite obvious that any government would like uh, to, uh, to, to decide about the sanctions or on, on itself. Uh, so from this point of view, automaticity is very important. But also others like bankers' bonuses or uh, financial supervision or um, uh, capital requirements, uh, hedge funds and, and others. There were all of them, uh, decisions were taken on the basis of, from one side, solidarity, on the uh, other side, responsibility. And also, uh, a very important issue which is uh, connected uh, to uh, our common approach to our uh, difficult situation in the European Union and not to divide ourselves. If we decide to take decision on the level of European Parliament and European Commission, we can be sure that it's a decision for the whole European Union, very important for us. And also, we need some structural reforms, it's quite obvious. Because for exit strategy from the crisis, not only recovery, but exit strategy, uh, we need some structural reforms. Responsibility is uh, mainly on the, on the side of member states, but Euro Plus Pact, very important from the point of view of structural reforms. It's uh, something uh, uh, really um, optimistic for all of us. Turning to the issue of the EU's budget, um, it's, it is hard to explain 
to the public, perhaps, a 5.2% increase at a time of austerity, when member state governments keep saying, oh, we're going to cut back. And here is the EU saying it's going to spend a bit more. And uh, the, the public don't understand that. Is this because they've been misinformed or what? In more than 20 member states last year, uh, there, there was a growth in the budget, uh, even uh, above inflation. So it means it's rather typical in the European Union today. And our budget um, is uh, always dedicated to uh, promoting uh, innovation, promoting competitiveness of European economy. So it means promoting growth and creating jobs. And what is more important for our citizens than, citizens than creating jobs? And almost 95% of our budget is just for investment, both hard investment, like infrastructure, for example, for creating our single market, so important for our small and medium enterprises and, and for citizens, and soft investment for human capital, and all the resources for the regions. So this is very important to use uh, almost 95% of um, uh, European uh, common money for such an investment. You mentioned neighbourhood and the importance of neighbours, but I mean, we do have two countries there where democracy is a little bit shaky, Belarus certainly, but also Ukraine to a certain extent. I mean, we, presumably more needs to be done. You've lived through uh, autocracy, you know what it's like. So we need to do more, don't we? You are right. Probably we also, it was also our mistake, especially in our relations with Ukraine, because the beginning, uh, Orange Revolution was, was fantastic. We, 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 we said it's just something in, incredible and unusual, but we were maybe n not, uh, uh, let me say, um, uh, active enough in Ukraine. We didn't have uh, uh, projects to propose them, uh, cooperation in the economy fields, and also our rule just now, more for more. It means more changes, more democracy, more rule of law, uh, it means more cooperation with the European Union and maybe uh, not only more democracy and stability, and, but also in the future more prosperity. Because at the end, the citizens are always asking about prosperity in their countries. It's quite obvious, it's very natural. And uh, knowing about our, maybe our mistakes, not only Ukrainians' mistakes, we should not repeat the same in the case of North Africa or Middle East or Moldova, because we know very well that the changes in Moldova are uh, really uh, uh, very reliable. President Jerzy Buzek, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.